Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction thriller film, The Relic. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with tribesmen from South America performing an ancient ritual, while Cowboy, an anthropologist for the Field Museum in Chicago, observes and studies. Cowboy is offered soup prepared by the tribe, which he obliges without giving it much thought. He has no idea what effect it will have on him, but he knows that something does not feel right moments later. Cowboy locates the ship that's supposed to transport his crates back to Chicago. He approaches the captain and pleads, asking him to unload the cargo that he intends to send to Chicago. The captain refuses to cooperate, as he's already way behind schedule. Desperate to find his cargo, Cowboy sneaks aboard when the captain turns his back. Once on board, Cowboy tries to locate his shipment, but it's nowhere to be found. Cowboy's heartbroken and has no way of leaving the ship, as it has already started to depart Brazil. Later, a homicide detective is called to investigate the ship that arrives on Lake Michigan with its crew missing. The Coast Guard found the vessel, but has no idea when it arrived. The police officers get info that it has been six weeks since it departed from South America. Detective gets on board and is shown where to look by his partner, the sergeant. It appears that there's a possible crime committed with the presence of blood in some areas of the ship, but no dead bodies have been found so far. The sergeant shares his theory that this could be a drug hit and that the dead bodies were thrown overboard. Not convinced, Detective locates the ship's bilge and discovers where the dead bodies are all along. An evolutionary biologist named Margot reports to work at the museum and discovers that her colleague is applying for the same research grant she is applying for. She confronts him for going behind her back. The colleague explains that he has the right to apply for the grant. Marco explains that in the event that the grant is given to him instead of her, her staff will be out of work. Marco walks away disappointed. Marco's mentor tells her that the crates arrived this morning, but he has not yet received any news from Cowboy. He adds that the crates were supposed to be on a ship, but due to a mix-up, the crates were sent by air freight instead. Marco and her mentor then begin to check the crates and find out that the crates are empty except for a bed of leaves and a stone statue of the Kathoga, a mythical forest monster. The mentor then explains a myth that the tribe made a deal with Satan in order to vanquish their enemies. Margo is not thrilled with the explanation as it lacks scientific evidence. Unlike her mentor, Margo is not superstitious and prefers to rely on science. Marco then notices a fungus on the leaves and sends it for analysis. Later that night, a museum security guard takes a bathroom break when he notices someone coming in. The security guard tries to get the person's attention, but he gets no response. Moments later, some creature grabs his foot and yanks him out of the bathroom. The security guard is then brutally killed like the ship's crew. When the body is discovered, detective is called in to investigate the security guard's death. He wants to interview all the employees and wants to know their whereabouts when the incident happened. He also demands to speak to Margot because she was the last person to leave the museum on the night of the murder. When Margot arrives at the museum, an officer approaches her and takes her to Detective. As Detective is occupied at the moment, he asks to speak with her at a later time. Detective is now at the crime scene. He looks for the guard's head just in time for Margot to walk in and sees the decapitated body of the security guard. Margot is terrified as she knows the dead guard and interacts with him daily. Meanwhile, Detective demands that the blood on the walls is analyzed. Believing the killer is still inside the museum, he orders it closed until the police have finished searching. Afterward, Detective approaches the museum director. She's accompanied by the museum's director of security. Detective informs them that the place stays closed until his team is confident there's no danger inside. The museum director protests and mentions an important upcoming exhibition that will earn the museum a lot of money from the benefactors. But Detective insists that the museum stays closed. The museum director adds that the mayor will also attend, but Detective's decision is firm. Later, Detective asks Margot if she noticed anything strange last night as she's the last to leave the museum. Margot responds that she didn't. She's also told that the security guard's office was vandalized last night. Detective adds that something must have been very important for his office to be broken in. When asked if there's a possibility that Cowboy is shipping drugs, Marco assures him that he's only shipping relics, including a smashed relic from Brazil and an empty crate. Marco then takes Detective to the Restoration Department. Marco introduces him to the museum's restorative genius. The restorative genius explains that the smashed relic looks like a chimera, a combination of creatures that superstitious people see as god or enemy. An autopsy is then performed to investigate the death of the security guard. The coroner explains to Detective that the skull is empty, and the brain appears to have fallen out or been extracted. The brain is also missing some parts like the thalamus and hypothalamus. Detective then asks the sergeant to dig up the records on the bodies from the ship. 
Detective wants to know if some parts of their brains were also missing. Later on, Detective is informed that the crew suffered the same fate. Meanwhile, Marco discovers that the fungus contains concentrated hormones in several animal species. She finds a mutated beetle in the container of leaves that possesses insect and reptilian DNA. Marco shows her colleague the result and tries to ask for his opinion. He thinks that the source or the software might be contaminated, which does not make sense. Marco shares the same information with her mentor, who cannot believe what he sees. The plant appears to be heavily infected with a virus. The virus apparently inserted its genetic material into the plant's genes. Detective returns to the museum and is reminded by the museum director of the exhibition's importance. But Detective is firm on his decision. Detective can only assure the museum director that they can have the party once the place is cleared. Interested to learn more about Cowboy's work, Detective pays Margot a visit again. Detective is then introduced to her mentor, who's also the museum's curator. The mentor explains that Cowboy is studying ancient tribes in Brazil, including their rituals and culture, among others. The mentor adds that he has not had contact with Cowboy for months. When Detective asks if their rituals include ripping off the human hypothalamus, Marco and her mentor are stunned. They are now beginning to think that there's a connection between the dead bodies from the ship and the security guard. In the museum's basement, two police officers see a trail of blood. Suddenly, a creature comes out of nowhere and is about to attack the officers, leaving them no choice but to shoot at it. As it turns out, it is a mentally ill, homeless ex-convict who tried to come at them. Finding the security guard's wallet on him and an axe, everyone except Detective considers the case closed. Detective knows that it's something much deeper and more sinister. Detective finds it hard to believe that a homeless person would start collecting hypothalamus, let alone board a ship and kill everyone. Detective is still certain that someone else is behind the attacks. He remains dismissive of the request to allow the gala to take place. Soon, Detective receives a phone call from the mayor. He is congratulated on a job well done and is forced to let the exhibition proceed. Detective is in a losing battle and has no choice but to follow orders and let the event proceed. To maintain safety, Detective plans to clear the wings of museum personnel and only open the central exhibition area. Detective also promises to bolster police presence, as he's still uncertain what they are dealing with. Still, in the laboratory wing, Margot and her mentor continue working and discover the killer is after the hormones on the leaves. Unbeknownst to them, the security is closing the area, where they are without a way out. The colleague overhears that the lab area is about to be checked. So in an effort to sabotage his rival, Margot, he confirms to the security head that he's the last one out. The head of security then orders to close all doors, leaving Margot and her mentor trapped. Later, Margot and her mentor need to see Detective and let him know the results. Soon, they discover that the entire wing is sealed. And so, Margot tries to find another exit. The exhibition is a go, and the mayor is attending. Detective orders a lockdown of all museum areas, except the main exhibition hall. He and several officers search the basement tunnels once again. Using K-9 units, they are taken to an area with a distinct smell. Suddenly, they are attacked by an unseen creature, killing a K-9 officer and a police dog. After the attack, Detective tells the sergeant to clear out the museum. The sergeant heeds the order and rushes back to the hall. Meanwhile, the mayor delivers his opening remarks. He's then taken to the Cathoga, the one the cowboy shipped. Pretty much everybody in the exhibition is unaware that a very dangerous creature is on the loose. Not soon after, the sergeant arrives armed with a shotgun and runs toward the mayor. It causes everyone in attendance to panic, including the museum staff. The sergeant tells him about their dangerous situation and asks the mayor and everyone to evacuate the place immediately. Before they can react, chaos erupts when the headless body of a murdered policeman falls into the crowd. During the hysteria, the museum's alarms are tripped and their security system goes haywire, trapping a small group of people inside. Two security guards are confused about what's causing the security system to malfunction. They try to restore the power, but are killed by an unseen creature. Some guests, including the mayor, are trapped. The security head informs others that the computer needs to be restarted for the fire door to be lifted. Since that's not possible at the moment, given that the power is out, the sergeant suggests that they use the fire stairs and head towards the tunnel instead. Still, the mayor decides to stay and wait for the police to arrive. Detective then tells the mayor over the radio that he's putting the sergeant in charge and that he should do exactly what the sergeant asked him to do for his own safety. At the same time, the colleague volunteers to stay and protect the richest museum benefactor, this is his way of kissing his smelly butt and ensuring his request for a grant is approved. The sergeant then asks everyone to be at his back as he leads the way out. The sergeant wants them to stick together and be quiet as they head towards the tunnel. Meanwhile, Detective breaks into the lab where Margot and her mentor are trapped. 
a Cathoda, an enormous chimeric beast, attacks them, but they manage to close a steel door to stop it. Detective wants answers to what they are dealing with, as it appears gigantic and violent. Margot explains that the fungus mutated a smaller creature. The mentor adds that without the leaves to eat, the Cathoga instinctively seeks the closest substitute, the human hypothalamic, until it runs out of targets and dies. He further explains that the trod knew of the fungus and used it on a human or animal to deal with an external threat, then hid until the danger is destroyed and the Cathoga died of starvation. Margot and Detective need to go back to the lab to find the way to kill the beast. They must hurry before everyone is killed, and the mentor decides to stay to prevent them from slowing down. The security head stays together with Margot's colleague, the museum benefactors, and others. He assures the benefactors that everything will be alright, and that he will get his hands on whoever is behind this. Suddenly, the Cathoga attacks him from behind and decapitates him. Not soon after, the rest of the group is then annihilated. Minutes later, police officers arrive on helicopters and use the skylight to enter the building. Their fate is sealed as soon as they enter the building. They are killed by the Cathoga. Marco suggests using liquid nitrogen to freeze the creature and kill it, as it is part reptilian and likely cold-blooded. While collecting the remaining leaves in the lab, Detective discovers the mentor has been killed, leaving Margo devastated. In the sewers, the sergeant remains in contact with Detective. But suddenly, a CPD officer disappears from the sewers as the Cathoga attacks him. Another guest is killed, causing everyone to panic. Then, there's silence. It appears that the beast is gone, as if something else catches its attention. It turns out, Detective uses the leaves to lure the Cathoga away from the coal tunnel, allowing the guests to escape. As soon as the beast is within range, Marco aims the liquid nitrogen at it, believing it will freeze the beast to death. However, the chemical has no effect on the creature. After realizing this, Margo and Detective immediately flee their asses away. Detective volunteers to stay outside the lab and protect it from the Cathoga. Now in her lab, Margot's computer completes the analysis of the creature's human DNA, revealing that it is actually Cowboy, who's the Cathoga. Apparently, he mutated after drinking the tribesman's soup. The Cathoga breaks into the lab through the ceiling, while Detective is locked outside. The creature then chases Margot, corners her, and suddenly pauses, seemingly recognizing her. Margot tells the creature that she recognizes him, but as the beast is about to kill her, Margot starts an explosive fire, and then makes her way out through an elevator. The fire then engulfs the Cathoga, but it's still alive. It still finds its way to chase after Margot, but she manages to hide inside a maceration tank before the Cathoga explodes and dies in the process. Afterward, Detective and a team of police break into the lab. They can still see the burned remains of the Cathoga. They then successfully find and rescue Margot from the maceration tank. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.